Earlier today, Dublin held the biggest parade ever to celebrate Irish culture on St. Patrick's Day. The tourist board said around 5,000 people took part in the colorful parade that passed through the center of the Irish capital, made up of military bands, multicolored giant fish, disco queens, and a man dressed as an archbishop, amongst a myriad of costumes that marched in front of more than half a million visitors. For me, Ireland has a, sp a special place on my heart, and so it's a way for me to remember the first time that I came to Ireland. So I think it's a way to memorize, to, rem to, to remind those memories when I came first to Ireland. So this is special because as well, the amount of people in the streets, like uh, it's good atmosphere, people are so nice. Everyone comes together to celebrate it, and you can feel the culture. Everyone celebrates it, doesn't matter where you're from. Irish President Michael Higgins in his St. Patrick's Day message paid tribute to all Irish women and men and engaged in peacekeeping and humanitarian work around the world. He said the people of Gaza were in his thoughts. Speaking of the United Nations, he said the Security Council has been weakened by abuse of the veto, leading as it has to its failure to respond with appropriate agreed resolutions both to Israel's military operations in Gaza and to Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine two years ago. On Friday, March 15th, U.S. President Joe Biden and Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar pledged to work to secure a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza cast a shadow on the annual St. Patrick's Day reception at the White House. Ireland has traditionally been one of Western Europe's strongest critics of Israeli policies toward Palestinians and maintains a long-held policy of military neutrality. St. Patrick's Day observes the death of the patron saint of Ireland. The day has evolved into a celebration of Irish culture with parades, music, dancing and drinking with a whole lot of green.